Welcome back to Cryptopia, where we go over the wet and wild happening in NFT land. Some news stories today, so don't forget to like and comment on your way in. Today, some fakeage, some plagiarism, some NFT steals and deals. Majority of NFTs made with tools, uh, made with free tools, are plagiarized or fake, Marketplace says. So the internet's largest marketplace for NFTs says majority of the items created using its free minting tools are plagiarized work, fake collections, or spam. Earlier this week, popular NFT marketplace OpenSea announced it was limiting the number of free items users could create or mint using its collection manager tool to 50 as a way to mitigate the misuse. The tool allows people in the marketplace to create and list an NFT without having to pay a gas price for the fee that or the fee that most NFT trading platforms charge to compensate for the uh, computeration energy it takes to process transactions. But the company swiftly faced backlash from users, causing it to reverse the decision Jan 27th. We hear you and we're sorry, read a tweet from the company's Twitter account, adding in a reply, we should have uh, previewed this with you before rolling it out. But in the Twitter statement, OpenSea revealed the initial decision to limit free items was because the company had discovered that 80% of the NFTs created using this tool on its platform are stolen work, fake collections, or used as spam. That's crazy. I mean, I'm not even that uh, shocked. There are so many unknown um, schemes and schemas going on in the NFT space, and this is just one of them. But 80% is a significant amount. That's You know what I mean? That, that does warrant sort of the limitation that they set on that. And though people got mad about it, I mean, 80, if 80% 80 of it is not is stolen or fake collections, what's and then you have, um, you know, the remaining 20% might be legit, but maybe they need to take the long way around just because just to be safe for their own sake, for the growth of the community itself. You know, what I mean, is it really worth 80% is a lot. You know what I mean? It's a lot. It's more. It's more than half. So it's significant enough we're working through a number of solutions to ensure we support our creators while deterring bad actors the company said we commit to providing or previewing these changes with you in advance of rolling them out artists have complained for months on social media that their work has been plagiarized and used by other artists or sorry and by used by others as nfts of course um yeah the, this is not anything new and what's going to happen is that i'm just going to talk the next article on this is pretty much, you know, um, on the same theme. Huge mess of theft and fraud. Artists sound alarm as NFT crimes uh, prof uh, proliferate. So this lady, uh, Louis Van Barley, a Dutch artist, uh, scoured the biggest NFT marketplace for her name last year. She found more than 100 pieces of her art for sale. None of them have been put up. By her she i wonder why she didn't but anyways um van barley is a popular digital artist with millions of followers on social media she's one of the uh one of a growing number of artists who have had online images of their art stolen minted as unique digital assets on the blockchain and offered up to trade in cryptocurrency on the nft uh platform OpenSea. the rise in such theft comes as the market for non-fungible tokens exploded last year attracting Sotheby and Christie and driving millions of dollar auctions for those new certificates of ownership. OpenSea has grown to a dazzling pace and is now valued at $13 billion, but amid its spectacular rise, the company is, going far too, is doing far too little to prevent the trades in fraudulent NFTs some artists charge and is placing much of the burden of, you know, policing this art or the fake art, the frauds, etc., on the artists themselves. OpenSea said in a statement, it's against our policy to sell NFTs using plagiarized content. Yes, adding that is regularly this lists and bans accounts that do so. The company said it was working to build new image recognition and other tools that would quickly recognize stolen content and protect creators, and that it planned to launch some of them in a first uh, half of this year yeah frauds scamases scams etc are 
prolific in this space. Um, I think much more than people seem to realize. I mean, we just read in the previous article that about eighty percent of the of the free stuff that was going up there was 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 fake collections, uh, spam, or stolen work. And this is going to be happening more and more. And it, it, they are going to have to increase their technology. A partnership with like Google or something, maybe in the future, could probably help that biggest search engine in the freaking planet might help with finding just like, you know what I mean? A, any other place where that image might exist, especially in the case of this girl who is a digital artist. Um, I'm not going to read the rest of this article. It's It goes into talk about some other artists, one who, you know, who's really happy about the digital space taking over because he's kind of a digital artist and there was no platform for him to sell his work. It wasn't something that was, you know, re really like wanted by most people until NFT sort of came around and created that space for a uh, video artist like himself but moving on riot now moving a little bit away from that but riot still fucked up accidentally uses unauthorized nft image for valorant ad a recent valorant social media campaign backfired when a computer generated image turned out to be an nft forcing riot to take the promotional artwork down and apologize to fans over the past few days, the main Play Valorant Twitter, as well as original account, um, have oh sorry, as well as regional accounts have received multiple takedown takeovers by in-game characters or agents, as they most commonly referred to. From Reina showcasing the vast wonders of Mexico to Neon, the latest Valorant agent introducing players to uh, gorgeous Philippines, each character has gotten a chance to represent their. Uh, respective home town so they have these characters that kind of um it's you know almost like a i don't know if they're all women or not um i think so it's just kind of but they're just basically characters that represent you know their hometown and where they're coming from and when they got to this person or so q tech savvy hacker extraordinaire killjoy hailing from germany everything was going smoothly until unbeknownst to Riot, an image used to promote the German agent, was quickly identified as an NFT. So they had to apologize and take it down. Um, if any of you guys are wondering what the problem is here, you can't just take the image. It does belong to somebody that's verified via the blockchain to approve. So, so they don't have the rights to necessarily take it, regardless of if it is just a copy paste or a you know right click copy image. Yes, you can do that, but at the end of the day, it's still not yours. And easily able to be identified, especially when you're on the internet, they found the original person. That person has the verification via the blockchain. Wim, bam, thank you, ma'am. Get rid of this shit, which is exactly what they had to do. So in cases like this, it's really helpful. I don't know if they did it on purpose, but it did help out. But we've seen in the previous other two articles that all that, it's got its pros and it's got its cons. Moving on, Melania Trump auction NFT hat and painting falls short of 250K. Oh no! She didn't reach 250,000 for a hat and a painting of her in a hat. <laughs> I, I don't know why I keep bringing her up. I keep talking about her. I've talked about her in a previous couple other videos. Um, she's not the first time she's done this. And she tried, basically, she was selling a painting of her hat a or a, a picture of her in the hat. Um, and an animated version of the hat. Oh, here it is. What Melania Trump's wide brim white hat, a painting of her wearing the hat, and an NFT of an animated version of the hat have in common. Melania Trump selling them for uh, 250000 She did not reach the 250000 Instead, she sold, she got $170,000, $80,000 short of her target. This was sold on Solana. And I think it was up to, there was a five bidders there, and that guy won. He also will win a letter from Melania Trump. Kudos for him. And moving on to the very last of this. It's a Jimmy Fallon. I'm about to call him Kimmel. It's Jimmy Fallon hyped his, his Bored Ape NFT on the Tonight Show. Conflict of interest. So basically what this article, I won't go too deep into it. What this article is talking about is that while, so this is Paris Hilton. I thought this was Ariana Grande at a quick glance, but it's actually Paris Hilton. So Jimmy Fallon was interviewing or talking with Paris Hilton and he I guess flashed his board ape to the audience and to her and showing off and be like hey this is my board ape blah 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 I got it because it looked like me he said 
And so, you know, I think she has a board ape too, so she flashed hers and blah, blah, blah. The real issue there that people are saying is that this goes against certain NBC universal laws that they have set in place where you cannot do anything without the strict permission from the studio in order to do it and that it could create conflict of interest. So what they're saying is that him providing his... Uh, showing off his board ape could then incentivize the price of said board ape to go up in value should he decide to resell. And then therein lies the problem that it was sort of like an insider thing where like he used the platform, the show to advertise the sale of his NFT. Should he plan to sell it in the future? If he does at all, I don't think it's really a big deal. I understand where they're coming from, but I feel like Fallon, um, the tonight show is his show. It's just as much, the, the the company show as his show obviously it's the company show but his face is so prolific with that show that if he's gone it probably wouldn't have the same effect on that show it could um you know when you have someone like trevor noah who took over or um i forgot his name now but anyways you know trevor noah if you know the show and he took over for the daily show i believe so it, it's possible i'm not sure what the exact numbers are with that show and how much it might have dropped but you know, I don't really know if that's exactly what he was doing. Um, I really think he was just showing off. He's a celebrity. Celebrities do this. He could have tweeted this out. He could have done it on Instagram, on a TikTok, on a YouTube short, whatever. And you probably people would have found out about it. Granted, this is where majority of his audience are. They are a lot older and therefore probably would not have the same um, impact as maybe on his direct show like this, especially with Paris Hilton. Also, they're talking about her NFT and as well. Um, she actually gave out free NFTs, I think at the end of the show, giving out from her collection. So I understand where they, they might be coming from, but I don't really think it's a big, big deal. And I don't think they should come after him for him for it. I'm not a big fan of Jimmy Fallon. I don't care much for him at all. Don't watch the show. Don't think he's funny, whatever. Um, but yeah, anyways, though, that's it for that. These are the, oh, wait, I have one more what time. Is it? All right, I'm going to save it for later. It's really just, it's just this guy. <laughs> he made $3 billion in revenue already. Facebook's metaverse efforts are already generating close to $3 billion a year in revenue analysis estimate. That's it. I, I, you don't even need to read the rest of it. That's, oh, there isn't even really, you can't even. So that's it. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Come back for more. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you next time.